In this series of videos, I want to show you how to create your own invoicing system. I'll start off by describing how to create the invoice itself in terms of formatting and structure. Also how to keep a customer database and how to keep a record of invoices. And you'll see here that wherever we have an invoice that's overdue, it appears in red. But if we say it's paid, then the red background disappears. So it's a good way of tracking your invoices. You can also see over here when the invoice was emailed and you've got a link to the invoices as well, so you can view them. Now in other videos, I will also go through these macros that I've created. You've got a macro that will save the invoice as an Excel file, a macro that will save it as a PDF file, a macro that will automatically email the invoice to the customer. A macro that will add the invoice to the record of invoices. And the last macro here will clear the current invoice so that you can start a brand new invoice. And it will also automatically generate the next invoice number for you. If you want to learn how to create this invoice from beginning to end, including all the macros run by these buttons, then follow the link in the description of this video to the playlist that contains all the videos in this series. Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at creating this Save as PDF button. It's gonna save the invoice as a PDF, obviously, but it'll also put the record of the invoice on the record of invoices sheet and leave a link to the PDF, as you can see here. Let's see how we can create this button. So we've already created our invoice and we've created three other buttons. We need to sort out the size of these buttons eventually. If you want to know how to develop what we've created so far, then you need to watch the other videos in this series. Now this button that we're gonna create is gonna require a VBA macro. And for that reason, you must save your file as a macro enabled workbook rather than a normal Excel workbook. Now the button we're gonna create is gonna require a VBA macro, and it's a good idea to have the developer tab on your ribbon if that's the case. It doesn't appear by default, so right click on another tab, customize the ribbon, and make sure developer is ticked there. If you click on the Visual Basic button, now if you haven't been following the other videos in this series, you might not have a module in your project, but if you go to Insert Module, that will create a module, and the module I have here contains the other macros that we've created for the other buttons for this invoice. Want to know how to write these macros? Watch the other videos. So at the top here, I'll create a new sub procedure. Sub, save as PDF. Now I'm going to have to declare a fair few variables in this sub procedure and they are actually exactly the same variables as the last button I created for saving the invoice as an Excel file. So I'll just talk you through these if you haven't seen the other videos. So the first one here is for the invoice number. I need to capture that because I need to transfer it to the record of invoices. And you'll see that's the same for the company name, the amount and the date of issue. But that accounts for these four variables. Term, I need term to calculate when the invoice is due. The path is going to be the path of the folder that I want to save this invoice to. The file name is going to be the file name that I'm going to create for this PDF. And I'm gonna generate that file name as a concatenation of the invoice number and the customer name. You'll see how I'll do that in a moment. Next rec I'll talk about later on, you'll see where that is relevant. Now I now need to store a value in each of these variables. So the invoice number is stored in cell C3 in my invoice. It may look like it's in D3, but these two cells are merged cells and you can see in the name box that the invoice number is stored in C3. The customer name is stored in range B10. That's down here in the invoice. The amount, well, that's right down 
here in I-41. Date of issue, well, that's up here, and that's in cell C5. Term, that's going to be 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days, and that's in C6. Path, that's the path to the folder that I'm going to save the invoice to, and I have that on my clipboard. The only thing to note there is you must have that backslash at the end of your path and enclosed in quotation marks. Now, file name is going to be the concatenation of the invoice number. And I'll put a space dash space between it and the customer name. Okay, those are the variables we need to define at the moment. Now, what we want to do is save the invoice sheet. We don't want to include these sheets in the PDF. And also we don't want to include these buttons in the PDF. So I'm going to set a print area. I'm going to select the cells that contain the invoice information. Then I'm going to go to the page layout tab, print area, set print area. And I can check that's worked. So if I go to file and print, you can see it's only printing one page and, and I haven't got any buttons on the printout. So the code for creating a PDF from the active sheet, active sheet dot export as fixed format. Now the first parameter I'm going to use is type. And I'm going to say Excel type PDF. Comma. The next parameter I'm going to use is ignore print areas. And I'm going to say false for that because I don't want to ignore print areas. And then I need to give a file name. So I use the file name parameter. And that's going to be path concatenated with file name. Okay, let's see if this macro actually works. If I create an invoice number 1001, put today's date in, I'll change the customer there. I'll put another item here and here. And now I'll create that invoice. So now I've gone into the folder that I've specified for the invoice. You can see it's created that PDF. If I open it up, there's the PDF, no buttons, but all other information contained. Okay, so that bit of the macro obviously works, but what I do need to do is to record the details of the invoice here together with the link to the PDF. Now the problem I'm gonna have is finding the next available row in this record of invoices. And the method I'm gonna use is to go to the very bottom column A, down to row 1,048,576, and then use control up to select the first value it finds. And then I need to move down a row and that will be the next available row. Now this is where I'm gonna use this variable, next rec, I need to basically find the next available row in my sheet. Now, because next rec is defined as a range, I need to set it because a range is an object. So I'm gonna set it to the next available cell in column A. Now, the record of invoices is sheet three. That's the code name for that sheet. And sheet three is the most reliable way of referring to that sheet. Equals sheet three dot range. And the range I'm going to refer to is that last cell in column A. Now the equivalent of control up arrow key in VBA is dot end, open bracket, Excel up. And then I need to come down one row, so that's offset. One row, no columns. So having found that cell, I need to put the invoice number in it. 
Then in the next column along, I need to put the customer name. So I can use offset, no rows, one column equals customer name. Then I can copy this, paste down here. So the next column along, I need to store the amount. You can see that in column C over in my sheet. Next column along, I need to store the date of issue. And then the next column along, it's date due, and that's going to be a calculation. That'll be the date of issue plus the term. So that'll fill in these columns here, but I still need to put a hyperlink to the invoice. Now to do that, it will be sheet three dot hyperlinks dot add. And the first parameter I'm going to use is anchor. And that is basically the cell that you want to store the hyperlink in. So that's next rec dot offset, no rows, six columns along. And then I need to give an address for the hyperlink. So where I'm going to link to. So I'm using the address parameter for that. And that's path concatenated with file name concatenated with the file extension, so that's dot .pdf. Okay, let's see if this macro works. So I've got to go back to the invoice template sheet and I'll run it. Record of invoices, there we are. And now I have a link to my invoice, which opens up the invoice for me. So the last step is to create a button for the macro, developer tab, insert. Under form controls, click on the button button. Let's create a button. Choose the macro you want to run with this button, save as PDF. To edit the text, click into the button. And then you can delete existing text. And I'll put save as .pdf. To format the button, click outside of it, right click. Format control, alignment, I'll say left for the text. Margins, I have 0.5 on the left margin. Now we'll have a little icon of a PDF on the button. I've got that on my clipboard. So I want to group the icon and the button. So the icon's already selected. I'm gonna hold down shift on my keyboard and I'm gonna right click on the button. Group, group. And to resize the button, I haven't got very uniform sizes at the moment. If I go to picture format, this is where you can set the size. So I say 1.4 for height and four for width. Right, let's create another invoice. Change the customer name. I'll leave the other details as they are. If I click on the button, you can see it's added the invoice to my record of invoices table and it's created the invoice for me. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next video.